Hi there uh, and welcome to the Turning Point weekly uh, prayer vlog for this week, the 12th to the 18th of October 2015. Uh, you know, as we begin to pray together, as we thought uh, through yesterday uh, during Jez's sermon, there is power as we intercede, we cry out on each other's behalf for God to do things. We see many answers to prayer uh, throughout the past weeks and months when it continue to do so. Um, I just really want to focus on mine quickly at the beginning, back on uh, the sermon from yesterday where Jez spoke uh, about prayer, and that sermon will be on our SoundCloud uh, page uh, by the end of today today. But he also focused on about sharing the good news of Jesus, that the whole point of evangelism that means good news in where the word comes from in Greek. And he, he made a statement yesterday which um, was powerful in so many ways, and it was it was simple but clear. Let us plan our diaries around the fact that lost people are going to hell. Let us plan our diaries around the fact lost people are going to hell. And that's the reality of why we exist. We exist because we believe Jesus offers an alternative to what's been offered by this world and ultimately where that will lead to, which is eternal uh, death and destruction. No one wants that. God doesn't want that. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever might believe uh, may come to know of him and have eternal life. So it's our role as Christians to be on mission for Jesus 24-7. Uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the uh, great Prince of Preachers from uh, from Britain, um, who ministered in London at the Elephant and Castle from the 18, late 1800s, said we're either one or two things, we're either missionaries or we're imposters. And uh, the call of the gospel, the call of the people of God is to get out and share the good news, to be a light in a dark place. That is why we exist. So as we're doing that this week and thinking and praying on people uh, that we haven't met and have met, friends, neighbours, family, strangers, who we can share the love of Jesus with, engage them with our story, pray for them and, and just be a light. And we need to pray at the beginning of each day, Father, show me today something. Show me someone. Give me a word, show me who I need to talk to, who I need to pray for, and allow God to open up that stuff and allow us to invite Christ to engage with them and him uh, with them also, and they with him, and uh, as the good news of Jesus continues to spread. Uh, just some things to, to pray for uh, beyond and above that, and I know James also mentioned uh, those that have gone a little bit AWOL uh, from church life, just reaching out to them and showing them the love of God that actually we're still here, we still love you. And would love you to come back, uh, you know, whether that's because of something that's happened or life or whatever. We just need to actually just be Jesus to those people in this moment. Um, coming up this week, uh, landing on Friday, we have uh, Pastors Viviane and Adercio coming from Annapolis in Brazil. Uh, we sponsor them uh, through our giving as part of our missionary given as a church and have done now for uh, since we started and just they'll be over here having some rest time but also sharing uh, the good news of Jesus what God's doing uh, and bringing some ministry to us but they'll be around Sunday as well so look out for them uh, go up to them uh, shake their hand hug them you know let's not be too English about the whole thing uh, let's just welcome them uh, together with us as part of our church because that's exactly what they are we're united together in Christ um, also Coming up this Sunday is a little Amara's dedication, uh, Stan and Liz's beautiful baby girl. And we just want to pray that God does his thing in that. And as we make a commitment as a group of people, parents, grandparents, godparents, church, the whole lot, to help this child raise um, to the glory of God, that we will stand firm to that agreement and keep pouring ourselves in to her little life and to the lives of Stan and Liz and the family. We want to pray for um, both Liz and Stan's family who don't know Jesus and friends that are going to be there on Sunday, that they are impacted by the love of God, the mercy of God, and God opens their heart to the gospel. The Bible says, until God removes the scales from our eyelids, there is no way uh, we can understand the truth that's coming. So we're going to pray for Liz and Stan's family and friends, they come to Amara's dedication that God will break that door down, will drop the scales on the eyelids and then they will hear the good news, respond to the good news and engage with Christ. They will become saved and part of the family uh, of God and that would be absolutely amazing. I know that would be Liz and Stan's absolute joy. What a way to start the dedication for Amara's life, for friends and family who don't know Jesus, to meet Jesus, become followers of Jesus and help raise that child to the glory of God. I know the fast and pray, I've been saying it for two weeks, but I really mean it this week. It will be up uh, ready for uh, the week starting next Monday. Uh, we may have done it, it hasn't happened. I see that in part of God's providence 
and planning. There's a reason and a purpose, and he knows what that reason and purpose is. Uh, and actually now looking through uh, my diary and some of the plans we have, uh, next Monday I will be spending the whole day uh, seeking the face of God on my own, uh, getting out there, uh, probably in, over in the Isle of Purbeck, and just seeking God for vision uh, for the church for 2016, for him just to breathe through some of our thinking and show us and guide us and lead us. So maybe everything ties together in the end. Um, so that'll be a big part of our prayerful uh, time for next week regarding the vision for 2016 as a church as God leads us and shapes us as our senior pastor takes control and shows us what we need to do uh, and that certainly isn't me that is Jesus and him alone and it always shall be. Uh, things I think we can pray for for one another this week a real thing that's been on my heart I've been thinking through identity and uh, my plan and prayer at the moment that God seems to be dropping and working and I'm still praying through it is that we're going to do a series uh, once we've finished Hebrews on uh, what it means to have our identity found deeply in Christ Jesus that will be in the new year um, but actually Jesus doesn't want to wait till January or February to start things he's ready to start now and some of the things I really want us to pray through and I think just for ourselves as well, for our family and friends and those we do family group and life and church with, but certainly for ourselves that God will help us break some of those old soundtracks in our mind, the things that have been spoken over us again and again and again and again that have power in our lives and that actually he'll, we'll allow him to be able to speak good news and speak truth where there has been spoken lies and things that have been designed to destroy us because I know God has a plan for each of us and the one thing that generally stops that is the things that we've been told, the lies that have been spoken over us, the words that were so carelessly ricocheted off people's tongues. Uh, and we've also done the same to other people. And maybe God needs to show us we need to go and repent from some of those areas as we pray this week. But also not just without our, that, that soundtrack broken and God will start doing something in that, but actually he renew our mind that would invite Christ to come and reshape us and reorientate our lives. And we're just going to pray that as we do so that God will shape us through his word, that this week as we think and pray into those areas, that maybe we just spend some time meditating, uh, maybe on the book of Ephesians uh, and Colossians, uh, just thinking around the stuff about God wanting to give us a new mind. And I've got a Bible text for it as where well, would be without one. Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through to 2 says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you will know the good and perfect will of God. For our, us to know what God wants for our lives, his plan, his purpose, and ultimately our destiny in him, we need to allow him to renew our minds, to break some of that old stuff, to bring some new stuff in, to shape it, to use it for his glory, that we may walk in the freedom he's called us to. I know it's generally not always simple as one moment, but you know what? We serve a God who changes things in an instant. And so we're going to pray and pray into that this week. I hope you have a fantastic week. Keep praying, keep opening your Bibles, reading, open together, pray with one another. Just begin to worship God in your own time. And as we come Sunday, that challenge from Melina, that we'll be able to come sharing the good news as we've engaged people with the gospel this week and we've seen the real fruit of that. But preparing our hearts ready in prayer, in worship, Saturday and Friday and, and Sunday morning, we get up with an intention. We're here to worship Jesus together. We're going to see his presence and experience all that he has for us and the key of all that is the love he has for us, showed and exemplified on the cross of Christ. Have a fantastic week. God bless you. And uh, hopefully to see you plug in in the family groups throughout the whole week. And see you Sunday.